Hey everyone, Thrasher here. We are continuing our discussion on harmonics. Before we were looking at the physics of stringed instruments, now we're going to look at the physics of wind instruments, things like flutes and clarinets, trumpets, and all of those things, we can kind of simplify them as being pipes, these hollow columns that the air is vibrating in. That's why it's often referred to as pipe harmonics, or the harmonics in air columns, because all these things can kind of be simplified as columns where these air particles are, are being able to, uh, to vibrate in. We're still discussing harmonics, all right, which means it's helpful to go over just some key reminders. What a harmonic is, for example, is it's a standing wave at some specific frequency. The specific frequencies, though, are always based on the boundary conditions. What is going on at that material? For example, for stringed instruments, the boundary conditions of those strings, well, they're always tied off, whether it's a guitar or a bass or a violin or a harp, they're always locked in place there. So that was my rule. The simplest standing wave I could make that followed that rule, that boundary condition, was this one right here. This right here is the first harmonic or the fundamental. How many wavelengths are right here? That's a half, and I like this diagram because it shows one full wavelength. You can kind of think of like one of these little hills, which remember are vibrating up and down as like one little piece. And for a string, you can fit one piece, or you could have two of those pieces and three of those pieces. We also have to remember, especially for this video, that harmonics are multiples of this first one, of the fundamental. The second harmonic, oops, I should actually write that as just F2, delete. F2, by definition, is two times the fundamental. The fifth harmonic, F5, is five times the fundamental. And that actually also means if we go back to our wave speed equation, remember the speed of a wave is constant. If it's a stringed instrument, the string's speed is constant, unless you're changing tension or, or density. And if these frequencies are multiples, well, that must mean that when the frequency is going up by a certain amount, double the amount, or five times the amount. This is the third harmonic. So right here, this is three times the fundamental. The wavelength must be going down in multiples. And we can kind of see that because in the fundamental, I can fit one half of a wave. For the second, which is two times the frequencies, I can fit two times as much. Or the wavelength is two times as small. Because here I have just a half, here I have a full wavelength. I can kind of fit double the number of those pieces. Remember, I kind of thought of this as a piece from here, from here to here. Now I have double. If it's the third frequency, the third harmonic, I should say, that's three times the frequency as the fundamental, I should have one third the wavelength, or I could fit three times as many pieces in. We'll see that in a little bit. Also, just remember that musical instruments are actually producing many harmonics at once. We're just going to focus on one at a time. So let's get into wind instruments. This is a little trickier, though, because wind instruments fall in two different categories, but they can all be simplified as these columns where the air is vibrating in. Let's look at a flute. A flute, when you play a flute, you are blowing across this top hole. You are not, like, putting your mouth on top of it, if you know what you're doing. This end is remaining open. Well, obviously, at the far end, that is also remaining open. So some musical wind instruments stay open at both ends. However, some of them, like the clarinet, you actually place your mouth over the mouthpiece, over this hole here. Therefore, your mouth is blocking this end of the pipe. It's a closed end, relatively speaking. This end, though, is still open. Same thing with a pan flute. I like this diagram. I don't know who this person is. But this little piece here is showing that those pipes are blocked at one end. They're closed. Whereas, again, when you play the pan flute, you're just blowing on top of it. They are remaining open. Because we have these two different scenarios, we have to look at the physics. And what's really going on is different based on these two things. Last point right here, we will often draw standing waves as our transverse. Even though with uh, these pipes, these air columns, they are, in fact, those longitudinal sound waves that are vibrating. But it's very difficult to draw all those little dots. Okay, But we'll see some examples of, uh, of both. Okay, so I said there are two types. Let's look at the first type, pipes, or these air columns that are open at both ends. That's like our flute example. Okay, we're going to go back to drawing these standing waves, but in order to do that, we have to make sure we're clear on what the boundary conditions are. If I have this flute, and here's my super simplified drawing, we'll see this a lot, we're just going to draw a pipe. I kind of drawn piece of, a piece of it right here, which I'll use later. Here are those air particles that are going back and forth, back and forth. What's going to happen at those ends, at those boundary conditions here 
and here. I have an animation to show you. Let me pull it up. Here are just the standing waves for stringed instruments. Remember, the boundary conditions are nodes and nodes. But let me go right here. Here I have my pipe. Okay, and here we kind of have a longitudinal. This is a simplified diagram. But we see this wave pulse. We don't have a standing wave here. We're just watching one individual pulse. But look at what happens when it gets to the ends. Remember, these are vibrating air particles. When they get to the end, well, there's nothing blocking them. So those particles are able to just keep vibrating, and they spread out. And then if you're over here, if these are sound waves, you could actually pick them up. You could hear them. If these ends are opened up, those air particles are free to vibrate. Therefore, they can wiggle back and forth. They can have their maximum displacement. Well, if the particles have their maximum displacement, that means they're moving a lot. That's by definition an antinode. Remember, antinodes are where you have the maximum amplitude. If these air particles are able to sway back and forth, back and forth and back and forth, they're antinodes. When they can't sway, when they're locked in place, that's a node. And both ends are open. So both ends are able to have those particles wiggle back and forth, back and forth. So our boundary conditions for pipes open at both ends, both ends are antinodes. If they're open, it's an antinode. Okay. You can also think of it as like if you're listening to a flute, obviously you can hear it, right? When you hear it, that must mean there's a loud volume. Loudness is amplitude. Amplitude is displacement. So it makes sense that these are antinodes since you're being able to hear those musical instruments. Now, this is a pain to draw. So I'm going to try and draw a standing wave that starts and ends at an antinode. Normally, when I draw a standing wave, I do something kind of like this. Because there's one wavelength, and boy, that's nice and neat. It's easy to see. But I have a problem. This can't be my fundamental for a pipe open at both ends because I can't start with a node. This is incorrect. I have to start with an antinode. I'm going to draw my dotted lines like that so we can see it. There's my standing wave. But I have to start at an antinode. That's not this part. That's this part. Right here is an antinode. Where is the next antinode? Not here, not here. That's a node again. Right. Oh, right here. There's an antinode. This is the simplest I can do. So here's my pipe. Okay, I should maybe make this like a like a cylinder, kind of open cylinder. Oh man, I can't draw. Like this. This is weird. We've never really just looked at the middle part of a wave. How many wavelengths are inside my pipe? There's half. So if I was to really draw this, maybe I draw one line like this, one line like that. There's my open pipe. Let's see, if I was going to draw, I have to start at an antinode. I have to end at an antinode. So let's see, if I was to draw, I'd do something like that. Ooh, and that matches. Here I'll add my dotted lines. This is a little weirder to draw, but it's just all about fitting that boundary condition. Okay, again, this is half of a wavelength. I'll show you a professionally created diagram because I'm not going to have you suffer through my pictures all the time. Again, you start at an antinode, you end at an antinode. What's the next possible wave I could make? Well, we're not going to go through and draw each of them over and over again because we've seen that story. But here we go. I have to start at an antinode. Hmm, here is an antinode, but that's the fundamental. The next antinode is right here. Okay, that's the next possible. And remember, these are multiples. I have half of a wavelength in this picture. I should have twice as many wavelengths kind of fitting inside. And I do, because from here to here, that's one wavelength. Remember, one spot to the next repeating spot. Here's one wavelength. Okay, I'm doubling the frequency. I'm having the wavelength of these waves are kind of fitting in twice as many. Let's look right here. I have one wavelength here to here. And a half, that's three halves. I have multiples, one out of two, two out of two, three out of two, four out of two, because I have two full wavelengths right here. If I was to write out those equations, remember how we would go like V equals F lambda, therefore frequency is equal to V over lambda here, and then we'd write it in terms of L. You get the exact same expression as before. So if you were one of those people who liked memorizing the equation for those stringed harmonics, it's the exact same thing, NV over 2L. Mr. Thrasher likes just remembering the boundary conditions. If it asks to draw the third harmonic, let me switch to orange, I know that I want to go like this, 
and I just want to draw here's one, here's two, here's three. How many wavelengths do I have? Here to here, that's one wavelength. Here is a half of a wavelength. Those three halves wavelengths equals L. L is equal to, I'm sorry, lambda is equal to, let me erase this. So lambda is equal to 2L over 3. I could plug that in and solve. But if you remember the equation, it's the same as last time. Okay, but again, it's based on the same idea. You think of the boundary conditions, what wavelengths can fit in there, and I'm able to play all these harmonics because all these multiples fit as they should based on these wavelengths. Well, let's look at the next example, pipes that are closed at one end. So here I have my clarinet. This end is open. This end is closed. Here I have my diagram, and I've closed off one of these pipes, and I've kept the other end open. Well, if one end is open, it's actually going to behave the exact same way. Let me go back to my animation here. If I scroll down, here I go again, but now this end is blocked. Okay, as that wave pulse is going this way, it's open. Those particles can spread out. We see that. This is an antinode. But notice when it hits this end. Well, these particles have a barrier. They have a wall in front of them. They can't move as much. They don't have a maximum displacement. They have a minimum amount of displacement. I'm going to go right here. Let me actually zoom in just a tiny bit. Okay, this is another diagram that I really like. This end here is open. They have this gray bar, but that's because that's what they're making kind of vibrate these air particles. But we see these particles are able to swing back and forth. It's an open end. Look over here at the closed end. Over here, these particles can barely move because there's something in the way. If the particles can barely move, they have minimum displacement. That's a node. And here's our standing wave as a transverse diagram, because this is hard to draw. It's hard to visualize. But at the closed end, it's a node. Those particles can't vibrate much. At the open end, they can vibrate a lot. So you have these antinodes here and these nodes here. That's our boundary condition. When it's open, it's an antinode. When it's closed, it's a node. The other thing I just kind of want to remind you of, let me zoom out a tiny bit. We saw this before, that sometimes you might see this represented as a pressure graph. We were first looking at displacement, and that's what we're going to focus on, how much these particles are wiggling. But the pressure is very much related, though there's no equation we're going to have to look at. Notice they're kind of like opposites, though. Here, where we have a lot of displacement, these particles are always kind of the same amount of compactness. They're always, you know, decently close to each other. This is not representing zero pressure. This is like normal pressure, just air pressure. Okay. There are other spots, though. Look at right here. Sometimes the particles are really spread out. That's low pressure. Sometimes they're really compressed. That's high pressure. So you have this going on from low pressure to high pressure. When you have an open end, yeah, the particles are moving a lot, but they're always kind of the same amount of compactness. They're all moving together backwards and forwards. Here, yeah, they're all able to move very little, but they have a large amount of sometimes being spread out a lot, like right now. Sometimes they're compact. So you might see a pressure diagram to represent these longitude noise, but it's the same thing. You're still going to have the same like wavelength if you go from here to here or here to here, but they are kind of like flipped. Anyway, let's get back to our slides. How do I draw this now? What's the first possible wave I can make? This end here has to be a node. That's what we just saw. So I go like this. This end here has to be an antinode. That's like this. Let me see. What's the first kind of wave I can draw? Remember, I like going like this. The first thing I can draw, oh, look at this, from here to here. Oh, man, that's really confusing. Hmm. How many wavelengths have I just drawn? I just went from this spot right here to this spot. How many wavelengths is that? This is one quarter of a wavelength. If this pipe is a length L, one quarter is equal to L, so lambda is equal to 4L. Let me show you a made diagram. Here I have that pipe. It's closed at one end, and I like this diagram because that's one full wavelength, but from node to antinode, this simplest, this fundamental, the first harmonic, fundamental, I'm just going to put fund, it's one quarter of a wavelength. So if we look at our pipes that are closed at one end, open at another, I have node and antinode. The next possible one I could draw, I have a node, antinode, let's see, oh, there's a node again. Hmm. Oh, there's another one. This is the second harmonic. 
here. Oops, I'm sorry, I should delete that. We'll talk about these different harmonics in a second. Okay, but that's the next simplest one I can draw. Here's the third next simplest one I can draw. However, there's a reason I deleted that last uh, word I wrote because that was incorrect. Here's that first harmonic, that fundamental. The second harmonic, remember, these are multiples. The second harmonic should be twice the fundamental. I should be able to fit twice as many wavelengths. Well, if this is the fundamental, twice as many of those pieces would look like this. Okay, here's that one piece I have right here. Here's twice as many. Can this instrument that's open at one end, close at another end, produce this wave? It cannot, because this end here must be an antinode. This is where this gets a little tricky. For a pipe that's closed at one end, it is incapable of producing the second harmonic. It cannot, because the second harmonic is this shape. And you can't have that shape in this pipe. So this is not allowed. This means that for pipes that are closed at one end, there are only the odd number of harmonics. Here's that fundamental from here to here. The second harmonic would be here to here, but that's not allowed. The third harmonic should be three of these pieces. So let me see. Let me pick another color. Here's one piece. Here's the second piece. Oh, that's not allowed. Is the third chunk allowed? Yes. So the third harmonic is allowed. Let's go again. Here's the fundamental. Here's the double the amount. The second harmonic, not allowed, because that's a node. Third harmonic, that's allowed. Is the fourth harmonic allowed? No, because that's a node. Is the fifth harmonic allowed? Yes. So if you're like me, if I can just remember drawing my uh, my diagrams, I know it's a node and an antinode. So here's the first possible one I can make. Here's the second one I can make. Here's the third one I can make. Okay, and I'm not now referring to harmonics because harmonics are always that n equals one, two, three, four. If you have pipes closed at one end, we have a new equation because I cannot produce all the harmonics. Now it's happening every odd harmonic. So now I have n is equal to 1, 3, 5, and 7. And my equation, if you derived it, you don't necessarily have to, is going to look a little bit different. So those of you that were just memorizing that equation, now life's a little harder because this equation is different than the one we saw before. The denominator is not 2L, it's 4L because now we have multiples of these quarter wavelengths. So you got to remember, if you're memorizing, you have to remember which equation goes with which pipe or which string, okay? Because if it's closed at one end, you cannot produce, you cannot produce every single harmonic. We'll see more examples of this a little bit later. The last thing I just want to uh, say, what I want to end with is, obviously, if we have just simple pipes, all right, if I have them open at both ends and then I suddenly close one end, Notice, just by closing one end, I must be producing a different fundamental frequency. So just by blocking off one end, you can change the frequency that's being played. I have in the description for this video a link to some musical videos uh, known as boom whackers, and they're actually producing music. And one of the things you'll see, they're just using these giant plastic tubes. And just by smacking them, it creates waves. And sometimes you'll see them actually stick on these end caps. Because a way you could play a different musical note, even with the same pipe, the same length too, is by closing off one end. Okay, we're still talking about standing waves and all that. Thank you very much for, uh, for watching.